Sebastian, Sebastian Fortin, here, and it's a very general uh, description of the Jewish community concept of information. So this is the reason we put the, this in the first place. So, let's see. Everybody knows that communication is a source, a transmitter, a channel, a receiver, and a destination. We have messages that the transmitter turns into signal, and then the receivers make the other. <coughs> convert the, the process and the source and destinations are, are characterized by, by states with probabilities and we have a uh, condition of probabilities between them and with this we can compute all the relevant uh, magnitudes, entropies and uh, 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 activity noise and uh, mutual uh, uh, information. So, and there are uh, very well-known re relations between them, but the fact is that com communication needs that a modification of the state of the search produces in the destination also a modification in such a way that the new state that occurs at the destination makes it possible to identify which was the at the search. Then, this is completely general. In Shannon formalism, we have a transmitter that makes the, the coding, that is a mapping between the states of the, the search and string of symbols from, from a code alphabet. And uh, the average code word length is computed in this way, and we have the average end message length also computed in this way, and we know that the first Shannon theorem makes the relationship between the minimum length of the, uh, the message, of the end message, and uh, the entropy of the search. In the particular case in the, that the code alphabet is binary, the relationship is more direct. This is something that we know, and we know that in the Schumacher formalism, coding is different because the mapping between the, the states of the search and certain quantum states that don't need to be orthogonal, and so we can make the mixture in this way such that we can compute the von Neumann entropy. And only in the case that the states are orthogonal, so we know that the uh, von Neumann entropy is this, has the same value as the Shannon entropy. And uh, when we have n letters, we have a sequence of states, so we can form this state. And to transmit this state, we need L2 state system called qubits. So the, uh, sh the Schumacher theorem relates the minimum number of states with the the von Neumann entropy. This is something that we all knew, and this is, this is the, uh, if you want, the framework of, in general, our discussions. So, here the content <coughs> will be the following. <coughs> First, we will discuss if entropies are really average amounts, then we will recall that entropies or information are not, have no semantic content, then we will discuss which are the units of measurement for, uh, for information. Then we will ask uh, what a quantum source will be. Then we will discuss information and coding, which is the relationship between information and coding. Uh, in this case, we have to ask necessarily about teleportation, try to understand what teleportation is. And finally, we will have some conclusions and open questions. So let us begin for, uh, with the first point. It is usually said 
that the in, that information theory is not interested in individual amounts of information, but it deals only with averages. This is true, but this does not mean that the concept of individual amount of information makes no sense. In fact, on the contrary, if we have this uh, definition of this expression, this is an this can has to be an individual amount if this is an average. average. Of course, because only in terms of an individual as amounts, an average can be defined as such, as an average. You, you, yeah. want, you want your one slash inside of the log. Hmm? Logarithm of one over. Yeah. You, know. then I, I you have a typographical error. Yeah, OK. <laughs> yes, see, see. <laughs> Be, be careful, otherwise it changes everything. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, yes. okay. See, this, is, this should be uh, here. Okay. Yes. Una sobre. Una sobre, sí. So, uh, the, the point is this. We have to, if you want, the, the point we want to, to make here is that if we want that to understand this as an average, this must be an individual uh, value. So we will come back to that later. Second, we have uh, the idea that the semantic aspect of information are relevant to their engineering program. This is a famous, very famous Shannon's quote. Now there is another quote that is also very famous that Information is an abstract noun. The fact that the goal of information is to reproduce at the destination another token of the same time as that produced at the source. This is, you know, the position of please, please, we have to please, please, Timson, please, please. Timson says if the source produces a string of letters of the form as the following, then the type of the sequence, the type is the sequence that this. We might name that sequence 17. The aim is to produce at the receiving end of the communication channel another token of this type. Oh, this is this is looks very uh, clear, but I think that um, well, I was uh, was not so clear for me from the beginning. Let us suppose that my search is a dice and my destination is a set of lines. In what sense they are tokens of the same time? I mean, they are individuals of the same universal, they are members of the same kind, they are instances of the same property. I mean, we don't see in what sense to so different systems may instantiate types, uh, tokens of the same type. I think that information is something even more abstract. I think that the idea was also in, in, in Timson later in the, in the book when he says the basic idea is of a pattern of structure, something which can be repeatedly realized in different instances. I mean, the states of the search and the states of the destination may have, must have the same structure. I mean, a kind of isomorphism, one-to-one uh, -one mapping, says Armand in one of his, his papers. OK, I think that it is better. But this is a formal relation. I mean, this is not the relation between tokens of the same type. Because a type must have, I mean, in the philosophical sense of the difference between token and types, a type must have done some content to identify its tokens. And here we are talking about something that is completely and absolutely formal. So information, in certain sense, is even more abstract than, than uh, types. And. Uh, well, perhaps it's an, a, a general uh, concept of information. It's a syntactic or very formal 
uh, notion that needs different interpretations in different doma domains. But another point is w which are the units of measurement for information. It is usually said that classical information in the Shannon entropy is measured in, in bits. And quantum information that is uh, represented by the uh, von Neumann entropy is measured in qubits. Well, let us suppose the Shannon information can be measured in bits, in nuts, in cartilage. It depends on the basis of the logarithm we take. And of course, this does not affect the concept of information, the fact that we use different units of measurement. So the bit began to be conceived as a unit of measurement of information. And the qubit, on the contrary, began to be conceived as two-state quantum system to encode measure, measure, uh, messages. But then, slowly, this uh, meaning passed to the classical part, and bit began, began to be considered as two-state classical systems used to encode messages too. So there was, there was a kind of a reification of the concept of bit passing from the quantum to the classical side. At the same time, qubit began to be considered as the unit of measurement of quantum information. So there was a kind of abstraction of the concept of qubit, the, the other side. And uh, this point, finally, we arrive this, to this place. So bit is a unit of measurement of classical information and qubit of quantum information. But the fact is that this kind of, of um, terminology, I think, or we think, that uh, confuses or, or, or yes, does not, does not distinguish now <laughs> the coding stage, this one, and the stage where the uh, entropy or the, uh, in the uh, information is produced at the source, even in this and here. I like, for, the, for this reason, I mean, conflict generation and coding stage. So I, I prefer this terminology proposed in one of the papers of Case and Foods, to call this C-bit. This is, the bit is a unit of measurement. C-bit is, is two system, two state system. So if we follow this idea, we should need something different for the unit of measure of quantum information. But we can propose something here in this conference. We will come back to this point too. What happened with quantum information and quantum sources? It is also we used to hear that quantum information is what is produced by, by a quantum information source. For instance, I, I quote Chris again. He says Schumacher following, followed Shannon's lead, consider a device quantum search, which, rather than output in system corresponding to elements of the classical alphabet, produces system in particular quantum states, in this case rho, with probabilities p i. <coughs> so, we have an analogy, usually stressed also, that the classical search A produces classical information represented by the shared entropy and measuring bits, and the quantum source M produce quantum information, so on. It is very nice because this is very symmetric. The point is that this is not what Schumacher says. I mean, if we read carefully Schumacher's paper, we find that he says something different. We have an information source that produces messages, not signals, but messages, and has a shared information given by the entropy. On the other hand, we have a 
quantum signal source. I mean, it's not a source of messages, but a source of signals. This is Schumacher terminology. This produces messages. This belongs to the transmitter. So, he says, textually, this, um, the quantum signal source, is a device that codes each message AM from the source A, this source, into a signal state, that is a quantum state, of a quantum system M. So, so the quantum signal source is a device that belongs to the transmitter, to the coding stage, not to the generating of information state. Okay, so here in Schumacher there is no quantum information source. What is what he talks about transposition, transposition that should not be confused with communication. I mean, do not, should, should not be confused the fidelity of the transposition between M and M prime that is computed in this way with the success of the communication between source and destination that is in the best situation a one-to-one -one mapping between the states of A and the state of B. Of course, the success depends of, on fidelity, but also on coding and decoding. How good are the processes of coding and decoding? The, the trace is Yes, the trace. Yes, I have some, some, oh, and, and omega is that's a mixed state. That's it's a mixed state. Oh, okay. It's this this one. It, it, this is the terminology Schumacher's terminology. So the fact is that I don't don't try. I never see the the um, equations again. I always see again trying to remember what I have to say. So the, since I don't read the, the <laughs> I don't care of them. Well. well, but somebody can ask, why not? Why not? We can say, OK, but we can define a quantum source like a quantum information source as something that produces quantum states. Why not? This would be the case. But the fact is that the states may be non-orthogonal. So the state of M prime cannot be identified by measurement. We know that because the states are not orthogonal. So the question is what, what uh, we have about communication. What is left about communication in this case? Moreover, we have two concepts here, communication and transposition. Communication is communication of information. And transposition is a transposition of a quantum state. So these are different concepts. We, if we equate communication with transposition, we immediately equate also information with quantum state. So in this case, the first, the link with the traditional concept of communication is lost. But moreover, we are talking about quantum mechanics, not about information theory. This is something that is almost said by Armand in one of his papers when he said, well, this, is, this concept is something that is so close to the concept of quantum state that why use another, why to use another, uh, another word to name it? What happened with coding? Again, we have. Uh, um, I, I, I like to stress uh, these uh, uh, words because they, they, they are they were very very in, in relevant for us. We, we learn a lot of, from them, in, even if we don't agree. And uh, they had a, a, a very high reper repercussion, I mean, uh, impact. So I think that it deserve, it, they deserve to be discussed. When he said the coding theorems that introduce the classical and quantum concepts of information do not merely define measures of these quantities. 
they also introduce the concept of what it is that is transmitted and what it is that is measured. So, classical information is what is measured by Shannon theorem and quantum information by the Schumacher theorem. This is also very elegant because it's, it is very uh, symmetric, but we have some consequences that we have to ac accept if we take this position first. The theorem becomes a definition. We have this, traditionally we think this like a definition, and this like a theorem proved in the, on this basis. If this now is the definition, this began to be the theorem. I mean, we do not, we should not to say that Shannon theorem is a theorem. I mean, we should uh, talk about Shannon definition or Schumacher definition of, uh, of uh, information. <clears throat> On the other hand, this would be not an average because if this is the information of, uh, definition of information, this is information, there are no uh, individual amounts of information. So, see, we have no individual amounts because this is not an information, it is not covered by the definition now, even by the theorem, this is not an average. So, we have to renounce to that point. Another point, and I think that this is serious, more serious, is that if a message is not encoded, it, is, it does not carry information. Uh, it is interesting when you read the Shannon, Shannon's paper, it says, and explain what tra the transmitter is, he says, the transmitter is a device that turns the message into a signal. When there is coding, it also performs coding. But he can be think in traditional telephony when you have only tra a tra transducer, a transducer from uh, sound pressure to uh, electricity. But there is no coding in the sense of, of channel. And perhaps we want to say that even if we have no coding, coding, uh, we have information anyway. So is, is the statement there quite right? Shouldn't it be something like, mm -hmm. when messages are not encoded, then they don't have a quantity of information associated with them? Because you might say the message that carries information, but, but it may not be that there's, um, if your argument is right, it may not be that there's a particular quantity of information associated with that. And those are different things. Uh, well, we can discuss that point. I think that, um, perhaps if you say that Shannon measures information but is, is, is defined by the search, it would be different. But if you say that it is defined by the theorem, I don't know if you have to this way out. I mean, there is a difference between Define here and measure in another place, or define and measure in the same place. Hmm? We can. Yeah, we, quite funny, but perhaps we should. Yes, we can. We can discuss later. Yes, of course. Uh, and finally, it is interesting that the nature of the uh, the information generated at the search remains remains in the fact at the fact up to the moment we decide to encode it. And we say, okay, now I don't, I'm, I didn't decide where, how to code the, the information produced at the, at the source. So we have no way of talking about information up to the moment we code. It sound, sounds a little bit strange. We think that, I mean, I think that the information is defined previously and then we decide to code it in one way or another or not code coding uh, at all. It is interesting that even now some in some situation an engineer may decide that it is better not for instance if you have uh, only four states and very very uh, different I mean 
not closed states, an engineer may say, okay, it's, it's, it's cheaper to send them like this than to encode it. So it is not, of course, in general, messages are, are encoded, but uh, in the sense of the concept, it, it is not necessary to transmit information for transmitting information to be encoded. So with, this, with all this um, <coughs> framework, we can ask ourselves, what is teleportation? Well, everybody knows that we have a two, two particles, and then when they are in an entangled state, Alice has one of them and both the other, and Alice makes it, performs it, uh, some procedure with the state, and then sends two bits to Bob, and Bob can recover the states and disappears from Alice. Okay. This is very strange, and there are two questions, I think that is very interesting, that Chris says there are two different questions that we can pose in this situation. One is, how is so much information transported, and then how information gets from Alice to Bob? Let us consider the first one. But which kind of information? Classical information, how much classical information is transported? We can ask that. Well, the usual answer is that it is infinite. Because we have two real numbers, you, we need two real numbers to specify the state. This is where, when, what it is usually read there. But the question is how that classical information is computed. I mean, how can I measure the Shannon information if I don't define the search completely? I need to know which are all the states and which are the probabilities. If the state were the only one, it would have probability one and the uh, uh, entropy would be zero. I need to have, I mean, the, in this case, different than algorithmic uh, information, in this case, to define information, we need uh, the definition of the whole search, and not to talk about uh, an only, on a single state. But even accepted that this, the information were infinite, we know that Bob cannot access. So in what sense we say that the classical information was transmitted? Well, it's not, for, for us it's not so clear when we say that we have infinite information to be transported. So perhaps the, the answer is no, 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 it's not classical information, it is quantum information that is transported from uh, Alice to Bob. So how much? One qubit. Each run of the protocol, we have one qubit transported. But what kind of qubit? What is the meaning of qubit? So now we go back to the two senses of qubit we saw before. Like a unit of measurement of a von Neumann, of von Neumann entropy, if this were the, the, the meaning, we'd say, well, but if this is a pure state, it's a von Neumann entropy, it's zero. So we are not sending one qubit. But in what sense qubit is a two-state system? Perhaps it is a two-state system, no. There is no, no quantum system that travels traveling from Alice to Bob. So in what sense we are sending one qubit from Alice to Bob? It's very strange. And I think that the reason is that we have to go back again to Schumacher. Schumacher says, quantum teleportation is a rather exotic example of, of a trans transposition process. I mean, it is not a process of communication and communication of information, but a transposition of a, of, of a state. So we have, it is here, and it's a transposition that could be made in different ways. This is one way, but a more traditional way carrying the system would be another one. So he said, teleportation is a physical way, among others, of, of implementing transposition. And this is 
a sign now that we know that cannot be copied at n prime, but can be transposed with certain fidelity. So when we ask about how much the amount of information, how much information is transferred by teleportation, I think that we find very strange, we are in a very strange situation because we are conflating transposition of signals between transmitter and receiver with the communication of messages between source and destination. And here, we find the transfer of information and dot in transposition. But we have another question, and this is the other one. How the how information gets from Alice to Bob? And you know that there are many different uh, answers and many very strange. We will see again this answers, uh, the information travels to the past and then go to the future. So we can ask how uh, the information gets from the two points, from one point to the other, and this is points to the, the, the very nature of quantum information. One could be, well, the, precisely the difference between classical information and quantum information is the fact that classical information requires a physical carrier to go, to, to travel from one point of the, of the space to another, so uh, it is limited uh, in, in speed, for instance. In, on the contrary, quantum information does not need a physical carrier. Okay, this must be also a possibility, but we have to face the consequences. And the consequences are similar as those we saw before. We have a search, and the search generates different kinds of information without changing its own nature. I mean, depends on, on how the uh, information will be uh, encoded later that the search produce one kind of, uh, produces one kind of information or another. Moreover, uh, if I don't decide which is the, the encoding I will use, so the information, the nature of information, classical or quantum, is, remains in the, indeterminate. And it becomes determinate retroactively. So when I decide, well, I will encode classically. So then, the information produced before at the, at, at the search turns out to be classical. This is something, at least for us, uh, uncomfortable. So, now we have some conclusions and open questions. Uh, when we see all this in perspective, our conclusion is that there are no good reasons to assume the existence of really two kinds of information. The, it is better to think that there is one kind of information that can be coded in two different ways by means of orthogonal or, or non-orthogonal uh, states. Of course, there is something that is called quantum information theory. This exists. And this is not something that makes no sense. This makes sense. This is a, a, a field uh, very active and that makes sense. But the, the point is how to understand the term quantum information theory. theory. There, are, there are at least two ways. One is quantum information theory. I mean, the theory of quantum information. And the other is thinking that there is quantum information theory. I mean, there is a, an, information, a, an information theory that is quantum. The, what is quantum is the theory, not the information. Quantum applies to the theory. And I think that this is not the, real, the, the way to understand it, but this one. 
we, we had to think about of a theory about information based in quantum resources, but not about quantum information per se. Uh, when we accept that information is not tied, really tied to, to uh, uh, any uh, um, physical theory that is neutral about the theory, we have a tool that can be used in a, in, for, a uni, for unification of physics. I mean that there are uh, attempts to uh, reconstruct theories in, in uh, uh, informational terms, and uh, they are very interesting and very fruitful because we can have a, a, a way of uh, uh, unify physics, but not in the traditional and, and well, I don't like this traditional reductive uh, view of physics, but uh, at the same time, unification is a, is a, is a good uh, aim for physics. If we have something, a concept of information that is not tied to physical theories, uh, to a specific physical theory, theory it can be the, the field to obtain a non-reductive -red unification of physics. Because if we, I mean, if we want to uh, reconstruct quantum mechanics with uh, information, that information is quantum information, and quantum information is, is based in quantum mechanics, things seem a little bit circular. So it's, it's better to have a concept that is theoretically new. These are the conclusions which are the open questions? Many. But they only will announce two. One, in certain cases, we saw that information transfer does not need a carrier. I mean, the, the difference of the traditional physical view, I mean, uh, no information without representation, the idea that always information always needs a signal carrier, well, perhaps, can we retain, the question is, can we retain the physical view without the need of a, a signal carrying the information? Well, perhaps this is possible, and this is the uh, subject of Christian talk. Another point is quantum coding. We know that, in general, we code with quantum states. States really need to be quantum, or it is enough that they are non-orthogonal? I mean, how much of quantum mechanics we need to make those protocols? This is another question, and this will be the talk of Fede and Leos. So, thank you. Um, somebody will be the, the, uh, the chair. Can you bring us the first Do you want to be the chair? Uh, my, uh, I mean, there are a bunch of things I could say. Some of them I'll have to say is my own talk. But just a few little crucial ones. So, uh, it's interesting one can end up the same place from different directions. So with your the slogan at the end, with the bracketing uh, theory of quantum information versus quantum information theory, um, that's a slogan I have a slightly proprietary feel for, because that's a slogan that I've been pushing for quite a few years too. So we've ended up in the same place, uh, but with a slight difference of, of detail. Um, many of the what you saw as problematic consequences of my sort of way of doing things are ones that actually seem okay to me. I'll try and explain explain mm. a bit more why. Yeah, um, I'll speak, speak more, more slowly because if, I, I'm shocked in some my, my many words. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, so, so let me ask the, the two uh, main questions I want to ask about your talk. So first. Um, 
if it is a unit of measurement um, and it's not measuring compressibility, then what is it measuring? Um, so that's one question. And the other question is, in the Schumacher case, why don't you um, pay attention to the case you also described in the paper, whereby one um, encodes half of a entangled pair? And there we don't have, so in the start of the paper, of course, he has a, a classical information source and then codes into non orthogonal states. But he also says, well, look, I could also have a density matrix which I'm going to code, which has come not as a proper mixture over um, these non orthogonal quantum states, but as an improper mixture because it's half an entangled state. Now, that looks to me as if it will cause trouble for your uh, way of putting things that quantum information is classical information or channel information in quantum states because that seems to be a case a case which motivates the idea of quantum source proper so what do you want to say about that well, kind of case? Uh, first, what, what a bit measures, measures information I mean, uh, you need to explain if, if somebody has um, um, a more physical view of information it's like you say what measures second? time but what is time? Well, it's, it's a physical magnitude. I mean, it's something that is uh, it's, uh, defined by, by its use. You don't need to search another, another meaning. I mean, of course, if you think that uh, information is not something absolutely not, cannot be interpreted like something physical, so, uh, of course, you can say, well, I, I need to, to say that this is compression, but you have a kind of compression here and a different kind of compression in, in, uh, um, in uh, Kolmogorov complexity. And Kolmogorov complexity is the compression for one single uh, uh, message. I mean, uh, Compression in what sense? Not in the, I mean, you have different ways of compression. So it's not absolutely univocal if you say it's compression. It's a compression. This is my first uh, answer. Then, regarding to the other answer, of course, you can use, I mean, when you have a, a um, transposition, you all, only also can. Uh, play with different, I mean, with reduced states and having uh, um, impure mixtures. But all this may be done in the, in, in the stage between transmitter and receiver. I mean, the point I want to stress is that I'm not saying, or we are not saying in general, that there is only channel information and not quantum information. There is information, not, not Shannon. I mean, Shannon gives a way of coding, and Schumacher gives another way of coding. But it's not that this is the Shannon information in the sense that Shannon has uh, some privilege over uh, the, other, the other. There is no, no privilege. There, are, there is only one. Uh, concept of information and coding in two different ways. This is the, the, the point we want to, to stress. And can I follow up, Chris? So, so the follow up is my, my worry about the Schumacher example where he uh, codes the half of the entangled pair is that that seems to be an example of a genuine quantum source. Because it seems to be part of your argument. So look carefully at what Schumacher says, and he's, he's got his information source is a source of the kind that Shannon described. And, and so he's not describing a quantum source. But that can't be right if you also imagine having something which is um, half of an entangled pair and then coding that. Because then you know, that's not been produced by the Shannon style source. So that's evidence that Schumacher had in mind genuinely quantum sources, in my way of thinking. Granted, to use one kind of quantum source where you make a quantum source by starting with a Shannon source and then uh, encoding onto orthogonal quantum states. So that's kind of a boring way of making a, um, a quantum source. And then he says, and that's the proper quantum source. 
get sold and then hang in pair. So that, that's why that's why that's textual evidence, if you will, <laughs> for, yeah, yeah. Okay. for there being the notion of quantum source in the ninety-five paper. Well, I, uh, I mean, you can use. I mean, you can accept that you have a quantum source if you want, but the fact is that uh, you have this that problem of of. Uh, uh, you have no possibility of uh, recovering the state. So in what sense you have communication? I mean, if you don't have a search where you have, I mean, OK, we can talk about this kind of, of uh, quantum searches, but what is the link about communication we want, if, you do, if we want to re uh, recover, I mean, maintain one a, a link with communication in the traditional sense, well, I don't know if we can, I mean, <coughs> we are talking about quantum mechanics. I, you can do that, that, of course, it is interesting, but in what sense is this information in the sense of communication of information? This is our point. No? I'll, I'll try and I'll have stand to explain what I think is going on there in my talk, so that's okay. good. Thank you. <laughs> Another question. In my duty as chair. Well, this just um, as a question, so much as just sort of a comment, which is sort of more uh, on the lines of what you were saying about this teleportation case. I, I don't actually remember what, I'm sure what you're right about what Schumacher says, but I, I don't actually remember what he said precisely. But um, in, in the literature, one talks often of entanglement assisted communication. You know, and there are lots of entanglement assisted protocols. And there, it seems to me, one is thinking of entanglement uh, simply as um, a quantum way of assisting communication. So, in an entanglement, in, in entanglement, I mean, you're really, you've got the state that you want to get there, and you're using entanglement as a resource, as a quantum resource. To, to do something that you can't classic. And so in that way of thinking about it, it's not that one half of an entangled state is sort of the information or something. It's rather that the whole entanglement state is acting like a kind of new sort of channel which enables you to get something from here to there. And that's the way I would think about it. Now, I'm not saying that that's the way Schumacher thought about that. You know, I, I don't remember what he said, frankly, and I'm sure you're right. Uh, but I, I just thought that, that but that's the way I think it's often thought of in the literature. I think that's right. So entanglement-assisted communication could be entanglement-assisted communica classical communication, classical information, or it could be um, uh, uh, quantum information proper that you're doing. So if you think of um, entanglement swapping in a teleportation procedure, then that would be a case of um, using entanglement to uh, swap around what entanglement you have. So that's using a, a quantum resource to do something with some, what I'm alleging to be, quantum information proper. Teleportation as a classical uh, communication protocol is rubbish. You wouldn't send information that way, it's pointless. It's, it's worse than uh, just putting a single bit in an envelope and sending it. So what's interesting about um, teleportation as an entanglement assisted thing is either the particular way that it's done, namely that the identity of the information you're sending is hidden, or it's the fact that you can use it to um, swap around what's entangled with what without having to have direct interactions between things. I think that there are many things, in, very interesting things, swapping uh, entanglement. My question is in what sense this is still communication? So, my sense is that when we use, when we forget the classical search, but I mean this, you know, what I see, the source and the destination, and we only see what happened between what we think the transmitter and the receiver, and uh, so we can make many things that are really quantum. Of course, and they are very interesting, but my question is, in what sense they are still communication? But perhaps now we will learn about it. <laughs> well, I mean, the sense in which it's communication is sort of about the same thing. 
you started with one thing, a set of properties at one location, and you, you basically have another system with those same set of properties at a, at a distant location. Well, I don't. That's the sense of communication. Well, I don't know if it is the sense of communication uh, we have in the, in the in the first place. I mean, I can give you. And I don't know, I can take something and throw something to you, mm -hmm. and you have to think. But I'm not communicating. I mean, like Shannon says, I have communication when I have a set of, of options, and I choose one of them, and then the other side, the other side understand which one I, I choose. I can give you uh, a recipe for make, uh, I mean, I can make you a recipe to make a, a cake, and I give you the information to make a cake, but if I, I can give you the cake, and this is not the information, you can eat the cake, but you cannot do the cake again, <laughs> because you have not information. I mean, it is different. One thing is to transfer something with its properties, another thing is to transfer information. I think that this is the point we will discuss one time and another during this conference, perhaps, in what, how to understand information in the sense of communication or not. Or perhaps somebody can say, well, I don't want to understand communication is something more general. OK, but I, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, just one remark. Uh, maybe in quantum computation, you, you need to uh, to transport the quantum state, and, and then you can use the example of Schumacher that you mentioned. But uh, I think that the discussion that Olympia tries to pose is, uh, does it deserve to be called communication of a message? Or maybe the, the, the protocols of, of nowadays called quantum information processing and all, some of them, they do not deserve to be called the communication of message. For example, let's go to the cinema today. So maybe there are other tasks which involve a very similar process to that of communication. We can be, of course, uh, used for harnessing nature and, and using these protocols for different tasks which do not have to do with a specific task of transmitting the message. So they, there's a difference there. So, uh, Maybe you have to do more if you want to interpret uh, and attack a, a proper, an improper mixture as a message or, or something to be communicated. But more, more on ontological or interpretational work has to be done. I think, by and large, that's right. Um, so not all instances of manipulations of quantum states, things you're going to want to bother calling quantum communication. However, an awful lot of what goes on inside quantum computers, in particular if you think about distributed quantum computers, which many of our experimental colleagues are working so much on, that precisely is an example of um, manipulating some quantum information here and then sending it over there and so on, sort of maintaining coherence and the rest of it. That really does seem to warrant um, communication talk in as much as the original uh, classical notion. Uh, but, but I, as I said, partially agree with you. With your point. Did the chair ask? Yeah. The chair but no, no. The comment. chair, the chair is uh, <laughs> so the one chair, of us. The, the so. chair asked the organizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, by and large, I agree with with Olympia that um, many quantum information protocols. I think it's a misnomer to call them communication. I think of quantum teleportation, particularly in the way I think about quantum mechanics. We have a quantum system here, let's say I'm the preparer, I'm the agent who has some thoughts about this system, or some information about this system. And I take half of an entangled system, and then there's another half that Ari is holding, say. I perform a measurement here, and then I give him two bits and then he does something on his side. I would say what that process has done has not been to communicate anything to him. He knows nothing, this is what I would say. It doesn't communicate anything to him. What it does is it allows me to take my information that was relevant, and I'll point out that word relevant, relevant to this system, 
and now made it relevant to that system. So in that sense, it's a kind of transposition, I would say. That would, that would be my view on it. But as a historical note, and this is why I pulled out my, 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 my laptop, um, it turns out that Schumacher, when he invented the word qubit, I think actually was genuinely thinking of a communication scenario. And since, I mean, since we're talking about Schumacher's notion of information, mm -hmm. I thought I'd read you a little bit. So in 2004, I, I had known that Ben Schumacher invented the word qubit for many years. But in, in 2004, I, I sent him a note asking him to recall the actual moment as, as best he could. And that was because I sent you a note asking you whether you knew exactly what it was. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so somewhere in this record, there's a note from Chris Simpson to me. And I passed it on to Ben Schumacher, apparently. Um, so I asked Schumacher, what is the origin of the term qubit? And Schumacher says, OK, here's the whole story as I remember it. I'm not sure that I've ever written it down. In the spring of 1990 at the Santa Fe Institute, Bill Wooters and I discussed the idea that by using suitable code words and decoding observables, you could reach the Holovo bound for classical information transfer over a quantum channel. So that's a scenario where say I want to communicate to Adam, I really want him to perform measurements at the far end and learn what message I'm sending him, then the question is how to best encode in quantum states and what measurements he should perform so that he's able to recover what I've sent him. So it is exactly like the Shannon scenario. And Holovo had proven that there's a certain number of bits per transmission that's an upper bound. And um, there was a question, could one achieve the upper bound by doing suitable coding? So if Adam and I agreed on a protocol, could he perform a, a measurement that would get him that many bits per transmission? So that was a problem on, on Schumacher's mind. It was actually one of information transmission. So he and Wooters discussed whether you could achieve this bound. He said, I don't think that I don't think I knew that Holovo had previously conjectured this. Bill will have to speak for himself. We worked on this for a couple of years. The problem proved to be horribly difficult. In 1991 or 92, I had a student, and then he, he just talks about the reasons that Wooters was visiting him. Then he says, after a couple of years of struggling with the problem, I was pretty discouraged. So this was a transmission problem, and he was pretty discouraged with the transmission problem. Um, I drove Bill back to the airport in Columbus, Ohio, which takes about an hour. As often happens when nothing is working, the talk turned a little crazy. Maybe we said we were asking the wrong questions, so the transmission question was the wrong question. Maybe in quantum mechanics, the old ideas of information are just not appropriate. Maybe we need a new idea of quantum information. The, that's what we born the word quantum information. And we could measure it in qubits. The idea of measuring something in qubits, like Noah's Ark, struck us as immensely funny, and we laughed for a good deal. Then I dropped Bill off at the airport and drove back. During the drive, I started thinking about our joke. It occurred to me that it was not a bad idea, actually. I understood several things immediately, such as the fact that quantum coding could not be a copying process because of the no cloning theorem, and the fact that, that the qubit would be a generic two-level system. When I got back to Gambier, I spent this summer cooking up the idea of data compression theorem, and then that's how, it, that's how it proceeded. So the discussion was on transmission. Then they said, nothing, nothing's working. Maybe we need a new concept. And then I don't know exactly how clear his thinking was on transposition or not. But that's the origin of the term qubit. And 
and consequently our conference. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? Comments? Arguments? Okay, then maybe we should thank Olivia. So, well, we have we are absolutely in time. We have a have an hour for a coffee, and then we we'll come back at eleven. Okay. Yeah.